Hello, Science Twenties. It is I, your favorite friendly neighborhood science teacher. Um, just so you know, this is how we're going to do our videos from now on. Secondly, I just want to pre-warn you, jokes online are no funnier from Mr. Kemp than jokes in person. So I'm sorry for your luck. Um, today, what we're gonna do is since we've had 10 days off since the last time I saw you, I want to review balancing chemical reactions. I want you to do some more worksheets. I want you to write a little quiz so that tomorrow and Thursday, we can move on to a brand new topic. So I wanna remind you that balancing chemical reactions means we are going to have the same number of atoms on the left side of the equation as we are on the right side of the equation. So if we have four carbons on the left side of your chemical reaction, I would like four carbons on the right side of your chemical reaction. Same with eight hydrogens on the left side, we're gonna have eight hydrogens on the right side when we're done. This you would remember from grade nine is called the law of conservation of mass where we are conserving mass. The number of atoms of reactants in a reaction are going to be exactly the same as the number of atoms of products in a reaction for that species. So again, think about this as the things that are going into the reaction, they are the reactants, they are the reacting species. The things that are coming out of the reaction, the things we are producing, those are our products. So here are the rules for balancing. If it was me and I was doing the notes, what I would do is I would pause on each slide, copy the notes first, then hit play and watch the slide. And again, you can rewatch or go back or go forward as many times as you need to to understand the concept. So rule number one of balancing, balance big atoms first. Rule number two, balance hydrogens. Rule number three, balance oxygens. What rule number one, big atoms first, really means is don't start with oxygens or hydrogens, okay? I have an additional two rules there called the odd even rule and the polyatomic rule. As I need those rules, I will throw them back into the slide to do a couple examples. Right now, if it was me, I would just copy this page as is. Okay, let's look at balancing a chemical reaction. So the first chemical reaction we're going to balance is going to be hydrogen plus oxygen makes water. So I'm going to grab a pen and we're good to go. Now, when we go to do this, remember, the same number of hydrogens have to be on the left and on the right when we're done. So I have two hydrogens on the left. I currently have two hydrogens on the right, which means they're balanced. I have two oxygens on the left which means I need two oxygens on the right, but I don't have that, I only have one oxygen. Now, somebody will probably want to go, ooh, if I just put a two right here, I now have two oxygens. That's true, but you no longer have water. Remember, we're forming water. If you sneak a little two there, if you turn H2O into H2O2, you are turning it from water into hydrogen peroxide. That's illegal, not allowed to do that. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put coefficients out in front. So. I need, have two oxygens on the left. I need two oxygens on the right. So that's H2O twice now, H2O, H2O. I now have two oxygens, but that's gonna change my hydrogens. I now have four hydrogens on the right. So I need to put a two here. So I have four hydrogens on the left. Let's check my work. Four H, four H's, two O's, two O's. Now it's balanced. Now, you can put a one in here, but usually as we get older, we don't. We just know by default it's a one. Um, the other thing I want to talk about is if you were to balance this, and let's say you balance this with a four, a two, and then another four, this does actually balance. However, I would mark it wrong. The rule for balancing is it's got to be in its lowest terms. So anytime you have a one in the equation, it's in its lowest terms, or anytime you have all even numbers, but you have an odd number in there, it's in lowest terms. Let's try another example. We have one nickel on the left. We have one nickel on the right. They're balanced. We have two chlorines on the right. We have only one on the left, so we're gonna have to put a two here. Two chlorines now on the left. Now I have two hydrogens on the left, two on the right. Let's check our work. One nickel, one nickel, two chlorines, two chlorines, two hydrogens, two hydrogens. So both of these are now right. Okay, let's go to example number three, C CR2, chromium. I have two of them. 
which means I only have one here, so I need two chromiums. I have three oxygens, two oxygens. Now, that's going to be a problem for us because three oxygens, two oxygens, there's no number, whole number I can put in front that turns a three, a two into a three. So my odd even rule is take the numbers you previously balanced, double them. So my two is now gonna become a four. So I'm going to erase it. My two now becomes a four and I'm gonna start the question again. So two chromiums, four chromiums. So I'm gonna put a two here. Four chromiums, four chromiums, six oxygens. So I'm going to need a three here for six oxygens. Six O's, six O's, four CR's, four CR's. Mine is balanced. What I would do is copy the next question, then unpause this video and watch me do the question. So three carbons, three carbons, six hydrogens. Now I have six hydrogens. I have three O's right here. I have six O's right here, which means total on this side, I have nine O's. Two O's, odd even problem. I'm gonna double the numbers I previously balanced. So my three, three is gonna turn into a six, six. Erase this too. So just remembering six, six. So this is six, six, and I'm gonna start again. Six carbon, six carbon, 12 hydrogen, 12 hydrogen. I have six O's right here. I have 12 O's right here. So that means I have 18 O's on the right-hand side. Two times what is 18? Nine. And again, we are perfectly balanced. So we want to go to the next page. But the other thing we wanna do is let's erase all this stuff. Perfect. Let's do our next example. Now my face is in the way, so I'll move me. We're gonna start again. Now, here's the polyatomic rule. Polyatomics are those species that have more than one possible charge. So SO4 is one of those. So it's one of those where you've looked at polyatomics before. So let's balance them as a whole. And you'll notice that on this page, I've color coded them so they're easy to use. So we're going to balance polyatomics, SO4, as one full unit. So on the right-hand side, I have three SO4s. On the left-hand side, I just have one. So I'm going to start by putting a three here. And a trick that always, almost always works is balance the polyatomics first. So three SO4s on the right. I need a three over here for three SO4s on the left. Now I'm already here, so let's balance hydrogens. Six little hydrogens, six little hydrogens, two aluminums, two aluminums. Let's see if this rule continues to work. So again, hydroxide, OH is in red, it's polyatomic one hydroxide OH, one hydroxide OH, one little tiny baby H that's not part of the hydroxide, two baby H's. So we're gonna need another one here. Now we have two baby H's, two baby H's. This changes my hydroxide, two OH, two OH, two NA, two NA. Okay, everything balances. Carbonate, CO3. One CO3, and oh, this isn't in blue, but one CO3, they're balanced. One copper, one copper, two Na, two Na. Last one in red, two NO3s, one NO3. So let's put a two here for nitrate. So two NO3s, two AGs, two silvers, two AGs, two silvers, one ZN, one ZN. Again, everything is balancing. I am going to post practice sheets with answer keys. I would like you to answer all the questions first before you check out the answer key. We're gonna clear this page. Okay, in a single replacement reaction, and that's what we've been doing. We've been adding an element to a compound. 
So if you think of our element here as Betty, we're going to add Betty to the Flintstones. Here's our compound, two substances. Okay. Now, our element, our single, can only exchange with something that is the same. So Betty and Wilma, they're going to exchange places, much the same as a compound would exchange an anion anion, or a compound would exchange a cation cation. So Betty and, Ron Betty and Wilma exchange places. Betty is now standing next to Fred. Wilma is off by herself. This is very true, and we're going to see some examples like this on your practice with us. Now, last one I'm going to have you do is, because this is going into a demo, we're going to look at calcium mixed with water. Again, polyatomic, so balance that first. Two hydroxides, and I need my pen. Two hydroxides, two baby H's. I already have two baby H's right there. I got distracted. So let's look at this again. Two hydroxides, two hydroxides, two baby H's, two baby H's, one calcium, one calcium. Here is my balanced chemical reaction. Now, when I mix calcium with water, we're going to see something actually really neat occur. And that is we're going to see that gas bubbles are produced. So I know there was a reaction. That's going to show me, tell me that that was the hydrogen gas, right? Those bubbles are the hydrogen. And then because this is calcium hydroxide, this is a base, we could also test to see if this tastes basic, tests basic. Now, I could use litmus paper that, of course, red litmus paper turns blue in a base. Or I could use, like on the little video I'm going to have you watch, phenylphthalein. Thank you for working through this first one with me. I will assume over time this will become both natural for you and for me. Thank you very much, everybody.